Good morning. Good morning. Wow. It really must be raining out there. I know. But it must be raining just enough for people not to look outside and stay in their pillows. But nonetheless, we are gathered here today to hear the Word of God and receive His grace. Uh, today is uh, Trinity Sunday, uh, the day that we celebrate the, the Divine Trinity and, and the fullness of who God is. And so I, I encourage you and bless you to stay, stay paying attention. We are going to be uh, confessing our faith according to the words of the Athanasian Creed. So I encourage you to follow along with that. You know, not just read it as you can and engage it. If you have questions, ask me afterwards and we can talk about those things. But God is working through these creeds to, again, define who he is for us. And so use these creeds to your benefit. So blessings on the service. A couple other announcements. We are going to uh, Psalm 29 is our psalm for this morning. The tone is going to go to tone D. Don't worry, Laura is going to play it for us and we'll sing that well. And the other thing is uh, we're in divine service setting one. So keep that in mind. It changes a little bit. And this morning we are going to have our choir and our bells uh, sing and play for us this morning before our hymn of invocation. So we have a great joy. Uh, what a great gift God has given to us in our, in our choir and again, you will be blessed in your hearing. So we'll begin with uh, the ringing of the bells then the, and the choir singing our first hymn. And then uh, we will greet one another with God's peace right now.
rise now turning to page 151 for the invocation and our confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment of silent reflection on God's word and our own sinful condition. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you with all word and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have done from them. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We just deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may glide in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him because he has shown his mercy to us. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him because he has shown his mercy to us. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the festival of the Holy Trinity is from Isaiah chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple, and above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings, with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook, and the voice of him who called, at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe to me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I. Send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now turning to the front of our hymnal to Psalm 29, we will together responsively sing Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the cloud. The Lord 
sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning at, beginning at verse 14. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you, are, you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise now for the Alleluia and verse found on page 156. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, Lord. And this will also be the basis for our sermon today. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do you do not marvel that I said to you, 
you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the servant, serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Now turning to page 319, 319 in the front of our hymnals, we have the joy of confessing our faith according to the words of the Athanasian Creed. This is a big one, and it's well defined for us, so take it in, and we will speak it together. Whoever desires to be saved must...
congregation may be seated as we sing our sermon hymn, hymn 506. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our text for today's service is taken from our gospel reading in John, and the sermon is entitled, Good News for the World. Back in 1993, there was an article published about a, a young woman who was overly distraught about her life. It wasn't going the way she planned or desired or wanted it. And just things were not going well for her. And she viewed death as a good news. (laughs) She viewed death as good news. So she decided to throw herself into the Niagara River, which obviously leads to the Niagara Falls. And the moment she throws herself into the water, she has a change of heart. She doesn't want to die. And she screams out for help. She's crying out for help, for someone to come help her. her. And then three men on the bank of the river come running down, and they form a chain, and they bring that lady, young lady, back in. For that lady... Those three men were good news. Memorial Day is a day to remember military personnel who put their lives at risk, and many of them gave up their lives in the service of our country. Their bravery and loyalty is good news to us who remain living free. St. Paul uses the Greek word euangelion there at the beginning of Romans chapter 1. And euangelion means good news and the good news of God, the good news that God has given his son. The 
good news of the Holy Trinity. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday, the first Sunday after Pentecost. And we remember the good news of our triune God. Right? In love, God gave His only Son. He gave His Son to give up His life for the world. And the Holy Spirit is given from the Father and the Son. And He is there to lead you in spirit and truth. With His Spirit and with His truth. If you can recall not long ago, eight minutes, from the Gospel of St. John, Nicodemus comes to Jesus with good intentions, right? But he acclaims the wrong good news. He calls Jesus a teacher, and to an extent he is a teacher, Others have also called Jesus a good teacher. But all of them were only viewing Jesus as a human teacher and not God in the flesh teacher. You know, if we just have enough good teachers, enough good teachers in this world, they will solve all of our problems. But following the wrong good news... It's common. It's common for the people and nations. It's common for God's people to follow the wrong good news. All the way back at the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden, it seemed like the serpent was a good teacher, right? Going to show what good and evil is. Well, that evil brought eternal destruction, death to God's people. Maybe we shouldn't have listened to that good news. Then you have the Tower of Babel, right? These guys thought it was good news to build a tower all the way up to get into heaven and supplant God and make a name for themselves. But God does not share his glory with sinful man. And their teachings were brought only to ruin. Not far along later, you have the worship of the golden calf after Moses is gone for about 40 days. It seemed like a good teaching. We need a God. But again, it only brought the wrath of the true God. The good news of the church building, of tradition or anti-tradition, of political or economic development, of education, medicine, uh, racial purity, national freedom, self-achievement and self-fulfillment, drugs, alcohol, and money become bad news when people try to rely on them for deliverance, hope, and salvation. It is bad news when your teachings turn you away from the triune God with his law and his gospel. And when you turn to worldly things. No matter how good you have it now, this is not paradise. That was lost long ago through sin. And there is no human remedy for our plight especially since humans were the reason for this brokenness, this corruption by sin. Therefore, when Jesus says in our text, flesh gives birth to flesh, he is actually saying sinful flesh can only give birth to sinful flesh. And the only way that this is to change, as Jesus says, is for you to be born all over again from above from God by his initiative in his way and in the power of the Holy Spirit but in order to embrace this new birth we must acknowledge the oneness of this triune God and we speak as Holy Scripture speaks about this oneness from Deuteronomy we hear God say (laughs) we hear God say There is only one God. 
The Lord your God is one. There is no other from which life comes. And from the Psalms, say among the nation, the Lord reigns. His kingdom reigns. And it is the only one that matters. Because he is the only one and true God that reigns and has a kingdom that lasts forever. And yet the scriptures also teach us that God is three in one. Even there in the Old Testament, the triune God is visible. The God who creates, the Father who creates all things, also sends out His Holy Spirit to create and recreate. And God the Father and God the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament confess that there is going to be God the Son coming in the fullness of time. But it's always been. It's easier to maybe grasp this from the New Testament, right? Because the New Testament, we get to see it plainly. There at the baptism of Jesus, who shows up? The whole divine trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are there. There on the Mount of Transfiguration, who are all there? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And throughout all the teachings of the apostles, they keep teaching this triune God teaching. And the work of our triune God is good news. It's good news for us sinners. It's good news for those of us who are separated from God. What we find out is that God the Father actually loves us immensely. Yes, the scriptures say He is love, but not like our modern philosophy understands. He is love that loves us while we were still wicked sinners. He loves us so much that he delights to show his people mercy. And in that mercy, he sends his son, his one and only son, in order that we might be saved through him, in order that the world might be saved through him. And the son, in obedience and love to the father, goes to the cross. But it's not just obedience and love to the father, It's love for you that sends him to the cross. Jesus is high and lifted up and suffered and is crucified and died and buried as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world but is also risen from the dead and ascended into heaven on your behalf to again strengthen you. The Father and the Son then send out the Holy Spirit In hope and in love it is done by the Father and Son so that through the water and the word of holy baptism we are given gifts of saving faith. We have new birth as children of God. I'm going to insert something here that wasn't before because we learned it in our Bible study. We are given new wineskins. We didn't have to supply our own wineskins. He gives us new wineskins and pours himself into us. So therefore, the Holy Spirit is bringing saving faith and then bringing us into God's kingdom. And the forgiveness of sin and life and salvation is abundantly poured out for us. And the Holy Spirit will, will lead you into God's truth through His Word. This is good news. This is good news for the world. It is good news not only because there is no other way of salvation. It is good news because there is no other need of salvation. You don't have to look for anything else. It's here. And it, is, and it includes and it is sufficient enough for the entire world. For from this word and from this font flows everything else that can truly be called good news to the world. You are included in that good news. Because God's word from today says, whoever believes in Jesus will not perish. You have been baptized into the triune name of God. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. 
Therefore, in your baptism, the Spirit of God came to you and gives birth to more spirit as we engage in his word and promises. You have been baptized with water in the name of the Holy Trinity. Therefore, we uh, affirm with the confidence of Jesus' own words, I tell you the truth. We have been born of God. We have received... Oh, no, no. Yeah. We have been received by God. We have been washed in the blood of Christ. Our sins have been forgiven and we have been placed in His kingdom by the power of the Holy Spirit in the Word and in the sacraments in devotion in study in prayer in worship in singing in psalms we are helped by the Holy Spirit upon whom we depend to teach us. Because I'm going to bring in somebody you might have remembered. We are no better than unbelieving Thomas and denying Peter. Again, the good news is that God sent his son to save the world. And by the water and the word of God, he has sent his spirit to make us his children. So therefore, likewise, it is clear that God sent Thomas and Peter and many others out in the world as his preachers, even after they displayed weakness and doubting and denying and unbelief, Jesus still forgave them in their repentance, and they believed in God, and he sent them out. God also sends you into the world so that the good news would not remain silent so that the kingdom would not remain silent, but be heard and be a help to those for whom God is sending it out to, through you. I know he may not be sending you out as an apostle, like a preacher, or like a missionary, but you are being sent nonetheless. The good news of the fullness of this triune God is for you and for your children and for your children's children. That we may speak more of it, more about it than less about it. That we may engage the lives of those whom we love with the truth of God's word and the divine Holy Spirit coming in that truth to bring life and salvation. It's for your friends. Let me ask you a question. Should we worry more about the good news of the salvation of our friends or should we worry about what they're wearing? Or should we worry about how much fun we're going to have with them? Or should we worry about what we're going to get them to do for us? Rhetorical question, no need to answer. Same goes for your neighbors. How can we just go over to our neighbors and talk about weather and politics and recipes and classic cars and not give them the good news of forgiveness and life through our triune God? And what do you have to lose in talking to your enemies about God and his love for them? If they're still your enemy afterwards... You've lost nothing. But if they repent and believe, then you have gained a brother or a sister in Christ. May we desire more brothers and sisters in Christ in his church. Therefore, may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit strengthen and enliven our proclamation of this great good news for you and all people. And may his kingdom grow forever and ever. In the triune name of God, we pray. Amen. We rise now for the prayers of the church. In our prayers, we have a few additional prayers. Um, These are 
this one, uh, these are for the families of uh, 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 Alvin Post uh, Sr. He passed away this past week, so we'll be praying uh, for their family and the Morris family. They were friends. Also for Donna Wismas, Donna Wisman's um, brothers passed away. Two brothers, Willard and uh, Marvin, passed away. So we'll be praying for for Donna Wisman's family as they mourn the loss of of, of her brothers as well. So uh, let us keep all of these people in God's prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord of hosts, your ways are inscrutable and your judgments unsearchable. Through your word, give us an ever-growing understanding of the depths of your riches, wisdom, and knowledge that we may glorify you forever. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, Matthew, our synod president, Lee Hagen, our district president, Matthew Hader, our circuit visitor and pastor, have heard your voice calling them to be your servants. Grant to them the gift of your Holy Spirit so that they can always say, Here I am, send me to whatever you ask. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, you delivered up your Son according to your definite plan and foreknowledge to be our Savior. Make our hearts glad in this faith that our tongues may rejoice and our flesh may dwell in hope. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord of hosts, you sit enthroned as King forever. Bless all who rule us in your stead with wisdom and understanding that truth and justice may prevail in our lands and lawlessness may be kept at bay. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, we thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon this nation. Grant us a long memory to recall those who who gave the full measure of devotion to our country's peace and security. Bring to mind the sacrifices of those who served faithfully unto death in the protection of our freedom and in the defense of our land. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, uphold all who suffer in our midst by your truth, especially Emil, Suzanne, Shirley, Heidi, Steve, Marie, Emmy and Margaret, Lindsay, Justin, Bob, Tony, Sue, Rick, Joel, Jan, Wanda, Donnie, Peggy, Dale, Chris, and Jerry. And Lord, we also lift up to you those who have lost, lo- lost loved ones this week, for the, family, uh, for the Wisman family as they mourn and for the Post family as they mourn uh, together. But let them mourn with the hope of the resurrection that is coming in Christ for those who believe. And since you are at their right hand, let them not be shaken in the midst of sickness or trial, but glad in their hearts, cause their tongues to rejoice, and make their flesh dwell in hope. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, take away our guilt and atone for our sin by touching our unclean lips with Christ's cleansing body and blood, that we may not be lost but abide in your holy presence forever. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the suffering and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Returning now to the service of the sacrament found on page 160. Oh no. Offering. You may be seated for the offering. It's a it's a tough thing to do a change in divine services, isn't it? So <laughs> May be seated for the offering.
We rise now, turning to page 501, and we together read that, sing that first stanza together. Excuse me, 505, the first stanza. Now we remain standing for the service of the sacrament found on page 160. The, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord. In the confession of the only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity in substance of majesty co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you've created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O God, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those
we hear the words of our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We rise now, turning to page 164 for the post communion canticle, Thank the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. and receive his benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our hymn, hymn 507.
Congregation may be seated while I lay on praise and accolades to you for being such a small crowd this time. Yeah, I, I, I forgot it was Memorial Day, right? That happens. But you didn't sing like a small crowd today. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Other things that uh, need to go on, for, I'll see if there's anything that needs to be brought up in the congregation first. Does anything need to be brought up? Miss uh, Beverly? Beautiful, and, beautiful. Uh, we have classes, we have movies, we have a lot going on. And it's real important that they get out of the house and have activity. Interaction. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like my thing. That yeah. Doing. Well, thank, uh, thank you for leading that up. You know, God has given people into the church to do this kind of work, be in the community. So Beverly is in the community that way. Uh, but also this little green flyer. This comes from Angie Morris, who asked if we could, if we can do a, 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 a gathering of diapers and all these other things. The list that you see is there. It's to support uh, the Life River, Life's River homeless family. So they're gonna, they've, they, they've built it. Finally, it's, everything's moving forward, and this is for uh, families with children. It's not just for everybody, but so they need to, to stock it. So we're going to help them stock it for this I believe till the, the last Sunday in June, and then we'll do a dedication to all the gifts that we give as well that day. So bring your gifts in, bring, your, bring anything that is on that list there, bring it in uh, for children and young adults and families that, that, so that they may be blessed. You know, these are opportunities for us to care for our community as we are able, right, as we are able. Other announcements that need to bring forward? I do have a, another one. Uh, Lutheran High School in Washington. The Luth- we're, plan- we're hoping to, to have a Lutheran High School in in, Was- in our Washington circuit. So everybody should have received an email and a and a survey on what level of participation we think we can have. So I encourage you to fill that out. If you didn't get the email, it's right here in the bulletin. And there's three different emails. One for the congregation. It'll ask for what congregation you belong to. That's it. You know, it's it's. It's, what do they call that? Anonymous, right? So, but other than your congregation, I'll know who you are. No. You're so bad. <laughs> I won't. So, the one is for the congregation. And the other one is for uh, people who are go- going to school, who have children in school that are in eighth grade, ready to graduate into high school. If you know any of those people, send it out to them. If you know anybody who just desires to care for Lutheran or uh, a better education than our current system, <laughs> got to be careful what I say up here, right? Uh, uh, so if you desire those, there are surveys for all those things. Or if you know people in the community, uh, other, other facilities, other places that can help us promote this and see what kind of, uh, uh, of actual backup that we have for it, that would be great. So I encourage you to do all those things, fill it out, okay? Any other announcements that need to be brought forward? All right. Go in peace and serve the Lord.